Good evening, good afternoon, good night, and good morning. Thank you for tuning in to RETV News Break. I'm Tyron. I'm Nicole with RETV Weekly News Break. Every week, Ty and I bring you news, trends, and more with a positive spin. For our first story, Jessica Nickbongo's life is full of bucket list worthy moments. The writer and entrepreneur lives by the principles that the world is one big neighborhood. People are inherently good and everyone has the power to create the life they want. So it's no surprise that the 38 year old became the first black woman to travel to all 195 countries in the world. After chronicling her adventures in her popular travel and lifestyle blog, the Catch Me If You Can, Nabongo is preparing to share those experiences in a new way. Her debut memoir of the same title, The Catch Me If You Can, One Woman's Journey to Every Country in the World, is set to be released June 14th. The travelogue, published by National Geographic, highlights 100 of her favorite destinations. Whether it's her recounting whizzing through the dirt roads of Uganda, on the back of a boda boda, or a dog sledding in Norway. Her experiences offer an alternative perspective of global travel and adventure. Because they're coming from the lens of a black woman, it was my personal journey to visit every country in the world. But close to the finish line, she became so much bigger than but close to the finish line, it became so much bigger than me, Nabogo tells Essence. She says that traditionally, the, the global travel industry has been dominated by white men. One of her goals is to change that to encourage other black women to push past any fear they may have of solo travel and to do so to do and to also make it more common to encounter women who look like her seeing the world. I'm a black woman who beyond that my travels have been shaped by the fact that I'm visibly African, the Ugandan American Globetrotter says. To that end, I've had some issues with immigration with people thinking that my passport is fake. But according to her, the good experiences far outweigh any bad. Overall, I've had 99.9% .9 amazing experiences, she says. Don't feel like my race hinders me in my travel. I move with positive energy and I truly believe that the world is my oyster. Nabongo's infectious optimism is reflected in each page of her memoir, allowing readers to gain insight to, into her journey through each colorful excursion. I want people to read this book and ask themselves if they are really living the life they want to live, she says. It's the question she pondered in the past, spurring some of her most audacious decisions, leaving a high profile corporate job, moving across the world many times over, and ultimately making it her mission to visit every country. Nabongo at one time climbed the corporate ladder working for a pharmaceutical company. It was a work it was work that provided a six-figure salary and perks, but was also accompanied by depression. If anybody looked at my life, they would have said that I was successful, but I was so unhappy, she recalls. Mm. And I can so concur with some of her comments. I was about to say, the, the, the last few statements that you mentioned there about her, a lot of people go into adulthood mm -hmm. and they, because we're always taught, climb the corporate ladder, do this, do that, and you'll be successful at life. But they don't say you'll be happy at life. Yeah. <laughs> and so she apparently did all of the things that we are supposedly taught to do, um, you know, from, from childhood to be successful and so forth. But she wasn't happy mm -hmm. in that element. And so for her to actually say, you know what? I'm going to climb my own ladder or do this my way mm -hmm. and not that I not only to be successful, but to be successful in something that I enjoy yes. is dope and inspire other people At to the do the same thing. Exactly. And I think that's the goal of life or goals of life. One, to reach a pinnacle in where not only are you living out your purpose, but along that journey, you are also encouraging someone else or being a light to someone else in their path um, of, the, of, the, of you know, this lifelong journey. So I commend her to, I don't even know the word to say, <laughs> but I am just, and I admire her, I admire her ambition, her drive, her, outlook to say okay my first the first leg of my life did that done that but there are 
obviously must be more to do here. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to do whatever I can within my power to make sure I figure out what that is. Mm -hmm. And I think she's found that at least, you know, currently. Now, granted, it could change and she may end up doing something else as well um, because she's only 38 years old. She's still young in my book. So kudos Jessica <laughs> I yeah. definitely plan to read or probably listen to your memoir um, because I just think for you to be able to visit 195 95. countries yeah. <sighs> yes I will definitely be living somewhat vicariously through listening to your memoir and I was going to say I know that you are um, just you know that you follow um, another couple or, or family that has decided to travel the world and document mm -hmm. their travels through uh, Instagram or mm -hmm. Twitter or something yeah. like that. So I'm I'm curious to know, and, and I guess you may know, or we'll have to take a look and see if she has um, that type of blog or vlog in like Instagram or Twitter or things like that to say, you know, hey, this country was this and I experienced this in this country. Of course, obviously it's in her memoir mm -hmm. um, and it's in her book. So yeah, you know, definitely go out there and buy that. But I'm curious just to know, just to get some of the pictures and some of the, you know, yeah. spots and things like that. You know, if that's on an Instagram or Twitter or a Facebook account or, you know, any of those things that, you know, help people highlight and document things that they go through in, in life. And that I think that would be nice to see. Yeah, very much so. I'll yeah. have to check it out and yeah. let you know. 195 countries. And I ain't even hit a quarter of that. <laughs> I mean, that's dope. I mean, cause I think if you think about it, I think some countries you can't even go to anymore. So yeah, that's just super dope. In our next story, a recent drug trial administered to a handful of cancer patients had the surprising result of eliminating the disease in every participant involved. The study was conducted on 18 rectal cancer patients at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in Manhattan and had a 100% success rate according to a paper published Sunday in the New England Journal of Medicine. Quote, I believe that this is the first time this has happened in the history of cancer, said Dr. Louise A. Diaz Jr., the author of the paper, and told the New York Times. The drug was administered to each patient every three weeks for six months. Participants in the study were suffering from rectal cancer and were given alternatives such as chemotherapy alternatives such as chemotherapy therapy, or a difficult surgery that could potentially lead to bowel or urinary dysfunction. Some patients are required to use a colonoscopy bag due to treatment, the Times said. At the conclusion of the drug trial, however, the patients were spared the agony of potential, potentially damaging treatment when they showed no evidence of a tumor after receiving an MRI, rectal, rectal examination, and biopsy. There are a lot of happy tears, Dr. Andrea uh, Sarek, an oncologist at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, told the Times. In addition to not needing further treatment to eradicate the disease, there were no instances of reoccurrence or ca of cancer in the patients during follow-up appointments for 6 to 25 months after the trial ended. But while the results are compelling, Dr. Hannah K. Sanoff of University of North Carolina's Lineberg Com Comprehensive Cancer Center, who was not involved in the study, said it's not clear if the patients are cured. Very little is known about the duration of the time needed to find out whether a clinical complete response to the doster lyme equates to the cure, Sanoff wrote in an editorial accompanying the paper uh, the Times noted. The story is also small and results would need to be replicated, Dr. Kimmy Nung, a colorectal cancer expert from uh, Dana-Farber Cancer Institute told the publication. Still, it is promising news for patients. One participant, Sasha Roth, told the Times that she had planned to move to Manhattan for chemotherapy and radiation treatment before the study began. The doctor gave her good news, the trial worked and she was cancer free. I told my family, Roth said, they didn't believe me. That is excellent news. Because you think about it, they have been working on cancer treatments for so long. Yes. 
And for, to, for somebody to finally, or some group of people to finally have something to give people hope when it yeah. comes to, I know this was done on rectal cancer, but who knows, like, like you know, the Great. one doctor mentioned, where it may lead to, mm -hmm. if it can potentially work on other cancer patients, to the fact that where it's completely wiped their cancer tumors free from anywhere from six to 25 months, mm -hmm. yeah, that health as well right exactly so I you know I, I definitely wanted to highlight this story while it may not necessarily be directly African-American um, or black uh, uh, related there were some African-Americans in this study I did read up on okay. who were actually a part of it and so um, and to know that you know colonoscopy and you know or colon cancer and rectal cancer is probably you know prep prevalent in the African-American community, that that's definitely something that we can actually look forward to and hopefully that not only this study goes forward to help us, but you know, it will actually be a cure for our community um, in the long run when it comes to cancer and who knows what other, other diseases they can rectify or, or get rid of uh, for us. And I do pray for their safety as well because I know in times past there have been those who have come up with um, you know, finding cures for cancer, not necessarily, not sure of the, the discipline of cancer. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, most often than not, something ends up happening to them. Mm. So prayers definitely go out to their protection and, you know, further adv advancement in their studies. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Alicia Reese has been of service to the people of Ohio for over 20 years. She's served as the Cincinnati vice mayor, a state representative, and as a councilwoman. She's made history as the first woman and African American to win state, city, and county races in Hamilton County, Ohio. Now as Hamilton County Commissioner, Reese says she's in a position that brings all of her experiences full circle as part of the delivery system for the people, ensuring that they get the help and services they require. She also has the opportunity to lead long-term projects that both highlight and benefit the community. One such project is the Cincinnati Black Music Walk of Fame, better known as CBMWF, a first of its kind interactive outdoor park featuring the stars and stories of influential black musicians from the city. It's not only an, an attraction that's a means of entertainment, but one of education about the many unsung contributions of black musicians from Cincinnati and the cultural legacy they have imprinted on the spirit of the city. The Walk of Fame will be a permanent place to honor our African American music legends and allow everyone to see their worldwide music impact, Commissioner Reese told Essence. It's so important to me because our stories have been le left out, she said. This year's honoree including, include Penny Ford, techno funk band Midnight Star, mega producer High Tech, and jazz musician Wilbert Longmere, who will be inducted post -hum Posthumously. <laughs> it's posthumously. <laughs> what he said. <laughs> the 2022 class follows last year's founding inductees Bootsy Collins, Charles Ford, the Isley Brothers, and Otis Williams. Commissioner Reese has a personal connection to the music because of her family's background. Her late mother was a national recording artist and her father owned an independent re record label. Her parents met through music and she grew up hearing many of their stories and those of other black musicians. Still, those stories and, and accomplishments have not been preserved permanently and she wanted to change that. My parents knew different artists like Bootsy Collins and others that were just kind of around my family when I was growing up. And I would hear their stories reset. I thought, well, I know these stories, but where could I find these stories and share them? Because I think the others would want to know too. The Walk of Fame project is a near 20 million investment by Hamilton County and also required additional fundraising from the private sector. For Commissioner Reese, launching the Black Music Walk of Fame has, was like connecting the final piece of a puzzle that will complete a sort of music corridor next to the Andrew J. Brady Music Center and across from Paul Brown Stadium where the Cincinnati Music Festival is held. People worldwide can come and they'll be able to see the stars with QR codes and use a kiosk to learn more about an artist. 
we will have video screens and say an artist is not in Cincinnati but they want to do a dedication they could do a live performance stream right there there's nothing quite like it she told Essence the Walk of Fame's grand opening is set for July 23rd during the Cincinnati Music Festival one of the country's largest African-American music festivals the festival is a major economic driver for Hamilton County, bringing in on average $107 million annually. I want to make sure that people know not only that these artists are from Cincinnati and from Hamilton County, but to learn their stories and major contributions to the world, she said. I want to be known that a black woman can do major development in a major city across from, you know, a major NFL stadium. And you can lead with the vision, with the development skills, and with the creative skills. We can do a major development, and I'm hoping that this opens more opportunities for women, not just in Hamilton County, but for women across the country. Okay, let me say this. A lot of times, people, we do news differently. So <laughs> you're going to get us just saying stuff that just wrong. doesn't make sense, and it's wrong. So, yes, I just had to jump in and say posthumously just because... She was stuck on posthumous things. Like, I get stuck on words all the time. Yeah. But I think this is an excellent story, mm -hmm. though. Um, one, because I'm always jealous of these cities that have these nice music festivals, mm -hmm. especially the ones that I would, I would be interested in. So to have this African, I didn't even know that Cincinnati has um, a, one, of the the largest, one of the largest, one of the largest African-American music festivals in its city, yet alone um, in, you know, in the country. Um, and to know that it's being put on by an African-American woman who is highlighting the people. Now, I do know. I do. I consider myself an old soul and I, I like blaming on my father um, that there have been a lot of musicians in the R&B and in, in the hip hop or sector that have come out of Ohio. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's dope that they are getting the recognition to say, hey, this is where people are coming. This is where a lot of our good music and stuff are coming from out of uh, Hamilton County in Ohio. I think that's pretty dope. Must be something in the water. <laughs> <laughs> it must be something in the water. But yeah, we would definitely have to put Cincinnati on our list to be able to visit this festival. Unfortunately, not this year because we already have something planned. But in years to come we i just would love to be able to experience it for myself oh yeah definitely i and you know you know like she said to do something across the street from a major complex in which you know pro pretty much probably gets all the notoriety mm -hmm. of the city but to say you know what y'all can have y'all city over there because it's not like the team is all that great anyway um no actually I lie. they've actually gotten better but um but to you know do it right next to it and say hey we can be just as big as your football team as your nfl football team that was a great strategy. Pretty dope. Great strategy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. In our final story, I'm really excited about this one. Uh, Nicole brought this one to my attention and wanted to bring it all to you. Um, on June 16th, actually our daughter's birthday, BT Plus will stream Martin, the reunion 25 years after the series finally aired in 1997. Jeez, I didn't realize it was 97 yeah. when it finally aired, when it was the last final that's pretty oh, yeah. okay anyway hosted by Atheon Crockett the special will reunite the show's cast which includes Martin Lawrence Tisha Campbell Tashina Arnold and Carl Anthony Payne II and moments um, and celebrate Martin's undeniable impact on network television during five season during its five seasons run in the reunion cast members will also pay tribute to the late Tommy Ford who passed in 2016 at the age of 52 the cast will look back on their show's most hilarious moments, revisit the iconic characters Martin made famous, and pay an emotional tribute to the late, great Tommy Ford, wrote BET Plus in a press release. Complete with musical performances and drop-ins by celebrity superfans, Martin, the reunion brings back the what's up, what's up? That's what he said. I didn't say it like that, but you know, that's why. Anyway, passion for fans that <laughs> have been waiting for. Scott Mills, chief executive of BET, said, Martin is one of the most beloved sitcoms in our community, both because it is hugely entertaining and because it, paid, because it played a pivotal role in changing the narrative of black voices in entertainment and in culture through the portrayal of young, ambitious black leads in healthy black relationships. Martin, The Reunion, will feature guest appearances from several entertainers such as Snoop Dogg, Brian McKnight, Tommy Davidson, Tracy Morgan, Marla Gibbs, and more as they discuss what the show meant to them, as well as how it affected their lives and careers. 
to be able to sit here 30 years later with such an amazing cast that has had such an impact on pop culture is truly a blessing, Lawrence said in a statement to EW earlier this year. I am always humbled that the fans still want more of the show and its characters. The highly anticipated television uh, special premieres June 16th on BET+. Plus. Man, Martin... The sitcom got me through some long nights during college. I was about to say, I, from my understanding, I recall you saying that this was one of the one of your favorite sitcoms. Fa back then. I did not miss an episode, <laughs> and even back then, we would record them with the, you know remember the VCRs, your, your, v, your VHS <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> tapes. <laughs> Had a whole series just because you know the comedy, the writing, the actors, and just being able to see more people who look like us on a consistent basis mm -hmm. that five year run man and it's not, i thought it was longer than five way. years it seemed like to me it was longer than five years yeah, I, right that's just interesting yeah but i mean in some of the guests in which they're having back such as marla gibbs tommy davidson um snoop i remember um were special guests that were that also appeared on martin back in the day right. like big you know biggie smalls mm -hmm. there were quite you know, tommy hit hitman and hearns i remember in a few episodes yeah. <laughs> there were you know quite a few it reminds me of like the cosby show the cosby yeah. show back in the back in the day used to have all of these at this at the time were up you know and up and coming celebrities rappers entertainers actors this that and the third Martin pretty much did a lot of that same, you know, same with his show as well. Um, it, it sucked that it went off the air. I can't believe it seemed like it was longer than five years. Uh, and it seemed like it went longer than back year. It just seemed like it was in the mid 2000s when it went off. Maybe because I'm just so used to watching reruns yeah. and things like that. Um, but yeah, I definitely am looking forward to seeing the reunion show. Um, I like how they have, you know, the, the Fresh Prince reunion show. And now we're doing the Martin reunion yeah. show. Hopefully they'll be able to do a reboot. Maybe not a... Because I know some stuff should stay where it is. And I think this is one of those. I really, really do. You wouldn't want to see like where they are now Specifically type Specifically because Tommy's not here. True, but they can always play that one off as the Tommy finally got a job. Because it was like, Tommy, <laughs> you ain't got true. no job, man. You know, they can play that That's to say, true. you know, but, you know, in, to, to pay homage to him some form, fashion or way, say he finally got a job, even though supposedly, I think Tashina Arnold or uh, to, uh, Tashina Campbell said he worked at a YMCA or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. But it would be dope for them to do like a maybe two or three or five episode series just to see where they are, how they're going, you know, because um, they were doing probably like he had a he had a radio show. Then he went into mm -hmm. TV. Yeah. Um, you know, Tashina Arnold was always into something, you know, uh, uh, you know, they were always doing something. So it'd be, you know, just to see the positive nature of how they actually were to be able to go, you know, and possibly with kids or grandkids yeah. by this point in time in life. I think that'd be pretty dope, but, you know. Gotcha. Well, you know, the trailer may, based upon the trailer, they are supposed, the question has been asked, so. Will there be a. We'll get the answer. Gotcha. So yeah. definitely tune in June 16th, BET Plus, to make sure y'all see the Martin the Reunion show. Um, we appreciate y'all and thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of RETV News Break. Be sure to subscribe to the RETV YouTube channel and Facebook pages for more great news and shows. Also, RETV is still available on Roku. Download the RETV Roku channel today and watch this and many other entertaining and educational shows uh, right there. We look forward to seeing you again next week right here on RETV. And until then, be, be blessed, blessed and, and be great. great. Hey, it's your girl, Tia Robertson. I'm the host of Entrepreneur Insider.
Create TV every Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern for entrepreneurs and news that you need to know about. See you there. Welcome to What's Going On. My name is Demita Joe. Each Wednesday, you can find me here at 3 p.m. I'll be over here discussing different things that are going on and try to bring you a boost of positivity for your week because we all need this. We're going to share some feel-good stories. We might find a hometown hero. We may take a look at some trending topics. And sometimes we might even find a lesson in a not so warm and fuzzy story if we can. I'm Demita Joe, and I'll see you guys on the next episode right here on What's Going On? Tuesdays at 8 p.m.